we would like to welcome Jamie, Dylan, Tony, David, and Derek to today's presentation and thank them for sharing their stories with us. Each one is a member of South Dakota Advocates for Change. Hello, my name is Jamie. I am here to tell you about my channel session after high school. After I left high school, I really, really wanted to go to college, but I didn't. I even wanted to go to college to work. I want to be like my brother and sister and go to college. I get jealous of them and my cousin because they were always smarter than I am for my transition plan. They told me I need to go to the training center. My job in high school was ripping silverware at the Berlin restaurant. They subtract a college or doing something else was never talking about the school. Never set me up with any job. The porch wash didn't allow me to grow like I want to, I feel like them, they didn't listen whatever I told them. Three years after high school, I learned how to read. I know now love to read. I am also involved in Special Olympics and South Dakota have it for a change and just I just realized recently graduate from partners. Hi everybody, I'm Derek Smith from Sioux Falls. Welcome to my paradise. In, to, in 2019, I moved into my own townhome. I like living on my own. I look to cook and make snacks. I'm making a man cave in my garage. I, I really like to relax in my own hot tub. The question is, how am I successful? Everyone needs people in their life who believes in them to support them. Thank you. Once again, hi. I'm, hi everyone. I'm Derek Smith from Sioux Falls. Here is my family and my dog and Jackson. I am a business owner. I am the president and sole proprietor of Derek's Media Services. I convert VHS tapes to DVD, I, and I create slideshows. I also work for Great Life Fitness and Performance Center. I'm a volunteer. Every Wednesday, I call bingo at Stony Brook Suites. I'm on the Special Olympics Athlete Board, volunteer for fundraiser Chase the Ace on Thursdays. I also host a podcast for Special Olympics called Inclusion and Fusion. How did I get where I am today? After high school, I took classes at DW. Jack Mortensen was my, my professor. I also volunteered at different places. I had jobs. 
works work experience at Amber Dawn Portrait Studio, photography, and a law firm. Most of all, I had people in my life who believed in me and supported my dreams. Thank you very much. I grew up in the Southern Black Hills and attended school in Custer. Because I sustained a traumatic brain injury and car accident when I was five years old, I received special education services all through my school years. I had an IEP and I had, o, had PT, OT, speech, and other therapies while growing up. I think my transition from high school to adult life went pretty well. I was involved in many activities to help me know what to plan for. And while that was a lot of work for me and my family, it helped to define my options. I will talk about some of those things now. In sixth grade, I ran my own IEP meeting. At first, my teacher and my parents helped me know what to do, but after a couple of meetings, it got easier for me to say what I thought and to say what I wanted for my plan. I liked, liked being involved with my IEP meetings. The sa that same year, we did a person-centered planning where my family and friends and school staff met to talk about talk with me about my future and my goals. We wrote a plan of activities with a sheet of with a sheet for each year of school grades until graduation, and for two years after that, we addressed school work and social skills for me. Those year, yearly lists were very helpful to me to keep me and my parents on track with activities to work on for my future. During the summers in high school, I participated in several different programs that add to my understanding of preparing for adult life. I was in project skills for six weeks. In the morning, I was in class, and in the afternoon, I was working at a job. I earned half, half credit for math and half credit for English, which helped me in high school. I learned about the job skills and how skills of how to dress for work, how to be on time, and how to listen to a boss. I like being in project skills and earning money. I did that program for two summers. The most important summer activity for me was when I attended the South Dakota Youth Leadership Forum. Being with other high school students for a week on a college campus was very fun. We learned a lot about advocating for what we need to be successful. I love being there on my own, making friends and planning for life after high school. My parents say that I changed because of my YLF experience. I became very focused on what I would do after high school. My parents and I started to look for a college program that would make the modification and adaptations that I needed. I attended Red Rock College in Wilmer, Minnesota. Their occupational skills program is within their vocational school. In the morning, there was there are classes on campus about work and life skills, and the afternoons are spent on various job sites where job tasting options help bring a focus to work goals. I grew up in the country, but in Wilmer, I learned that I want to live in a city as an adult. Since I don't drive, have stores and coffee shops within a walking distance is important to me. While being away at college, I learned about other skills like cooking, cleaning, and using the bus system. I made friends at school and at work and in the community. When I got back from Minnesota, I settled into spearfishing and began working with folk rehab to find a job. I've had several different jobs over the years and have also used a career development team to secure the job I have now and that I really like. I think the experiences I had in the in and after high school helped me to know what I want to want in life and what is possible for me. My advice is to get involved in your community through volunteer work. My, for example, I like to read and I was able to meet people and develop job skills 
by volunteering at the library while in high school. I have joined many groups and organizations over the years, from Boy Scouts to youth groups to history and wildlife clubs. I have participated local, in local and statewide leadership programs, partners in policymaking, the Lions Club, South Africa, advocates for change in various history groups. This has allowed me to get to know my community and to be involved in the activities and social circles that I enjoy. I'd also advise that you keep trying different job options until you find something that you like doing. You may have to work at some things that you don't like at all in order to decide what you do like for work. Exploring options is part of the fun of life. Don't be discouraged. When you figure out about what's possible and what's important to you, then you can learn the skills you need. I hope I gave you some ideas. About what you can do for making the transition to an adult life that fits you well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm from Dewa, South Dakota, the home of Wild Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane. My family is my mom and dad, my two, my two sisters, Kelsey and Katie, my two amazing brother-in-laws, Mark and Andy, my two my niece and nephew, Charlotte and Nolan, and my dog, Cooper. Now I live up in St. Ange, but we'll talk about that later. I was born with spina bifida, and I need leg braces to help me walk. Sometimes I need, I have my motorized scooter, and that helps me get around, or a walker. I went to school in Lita, just like my sisters, until high school. Then I to Spearfish. It was more accessible and different program. I took regular classes like everybody else and then I did life skill, cooking, cleaning, laundry. I've volunteered at an assisted living, setting up snacks and bingo, but that kind of thing. But it didn't last too long. It was fun, but it didn't last. My program was at a sheltered workshop where I did packaging in Department of Health. I loved being busy. I loved the work, but there wasn't enough for like a couple hours a day and in maybe a couple days a week and I was so bored very bored very bored you have no idea how bored I was I wanted a job that was meaningful and be independent but that didn't happen I was still living at home with my mom and dad my sisters were both off at college and I had no job just the workshop I love my mom and dad and they love me of course but maybe I should move to a group home to be more independent and oh, um, away from them. So that was the plan. I um, moved in with seven other people with paid staff that did all the cooking, cleaning, personal care for everybody. Some of the staff would let me help with meals, laundry, and other stuff. And I like to be busy. Some of the staff didn't let me be involved. Cooking, cleaning, laundry, meal prep, and I sat in my room and I was bored, 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 watching TV and, and doing nothing. Some of the staff um, came and went, but some of us are, some of them are still friends. The staff turnover was like continuous and I didn't know who was, they were gone and that was hard. My f family and I decided to explore some other options with Mackenzie, my case manager for like um, different programming. We researched um, shared living, decided to, to put in an application for that and see if I could qualify for it. The timing was perfect. Just as everything was approved, COVID-19 reared its ugly head and shut everything down. I was moved back home. Some of the things I do at home are cooking, cleaning, gardening, canning, laundry, everyday stuff. Another one of my projects is beekeeping, which is make, spinning honey from the frames, making candles, making lip balm from the wax, keeping EpiPens on hand just in case my mom and dad have an allergic reaction to the bees. 
I was able to be part of a craft fair here in St. Ange. I sold um, cocoa bombs, cider bombs, chips and salsa. And it was a lot of fun. And I had a great time. From that, I, people were able to order um, more of that um, chips and salsa, cocoa bombs, cider bombs from the, for, for themselves. I'm part of um, groups and organizations like the HRC committee the DD Conference Planning Committee, the DD Council, Advocates for Change. Previously, there wouldn't, been, wouldn't have been staff to take me to these like places. My mo mom and dad um, are my staff. They um, take me uh, to meetings in, in per person across the st state for like me meetings and stuff. I do, do a lot of Zoom as well. My life continues to change, and that's okay. That's how life is. I'm blessed to have the program, and my mom and dad, and I'm living my best life. My first transition experience was in 2010, when I attended YLF in Aberdeen. When I, was, when I went to YLF, it was the first time I went someplace by myself without any family member, at YLF, we learned things about getting a job. There were booths set up with information about different organizations. During the community service activity, I did cooking at the Adjustment Training Center, and we planted a garden. We painted a mural on the wall. Transition classes taught me money management. I learned how to open a checking account and write checks. During transition classes, I learned independent living skills like cooking, cleaning, and working in the community. We volunteered to clean at the Methodist Church. I volunteered at Smith Zimmerman Museum, sorting documents. I washed dishes at Pizza Hut and stocked shelves at the grocery store. I had a paid job at DSU in the dining services. Then I was in the project search program at Avera Hospital in Sioux Falls. The program was divided into three rotations. First, I did housekeeping where I cleaned the nurse's station. Then I scanned documents during the office rotation. In the food service rotation, I learned how to prepare food. At the search graduation, I gave the introduction speech. In 2011, Project Search had an open house at the Ramcota. The following day, I was on a panel and gave a speech about my transition journey. I was also involved in independent living choices in Sioux Falls and Madison and also People First. I have learned living skills and advocacy skills by attending several conferences and symposiums such as Catch the Wave, Dare to Dream, Handicap This, an advocacy jam. I went with my mom to Partners in Policy Making's annual continuing education event. In 2015, I enrolled in Partners in Policy Making myself. One week in a month for six months, the class covers many disability related subjects people first language, education laws, inclusion, person centered thinking, legislation assertiveness, abuse and neglect, ADA history, and community. At Partners graduation, I felt empowered and I encouraged other people with disabilities and parents to attend the program. Then I applied to be a member on the Council on Developmental Disabilities where I was elected member at large. I'm currently a member of Advocates for Change. We are a network of self-advocates in South Dakota that stick up for ourselves about issues that affect people with disabilities. The leadership is available to do presentations on a variety of topics to any group that would like us to present. I am involved with Special Olympics in track and bowling with the Madison All-Stars team. Every year I help my team raise money 
for a fundraiser called Strikes for Special Olympics. I pass out information about partners in policy making to other athletes and tell parents about advocacy programs. I enjoy being in Zoom meetings with Advocates for Change members and other YLF alumni. Last year, I talked about my transition and advocacy journey at the Virtual Teachers Roundup. For the past five years, I have worked as a volunteer at the Good Samaritan Nursing Home. I enjoy meeting the residents while I clean and help with activities and also work at the dining room. Now you know the rest of the story.